What's good, y'all? Elvis here, back again with another episode of Better Barbering. For my new people, Better Barber is a series that I started where I share tips and tricks that made me a better barber that other people can use to make them better barbers and ideally better people. So y'all know I've been cutting hair for a minute, about like six years. And over that time, I've had a lot of awkward moments as a barber. So today I decided I wanted to share my top five awkward barber moments. Number one, running into old clients. That video is funny, but it's not really like that for me in real life. I personally don't have any ownership over my clients. Like I'm not possessive about them. I just appreciate when they come to me in the first place. I don't care about really cutting their hair forever. So I don't take it personal when people go to other barbers to get their hair cut. Okay, one time I was at a gas station and I went inside to prepay for gas. And one of like my old clients was at the register just working. And I walked up to him like, hey, what's good? You know, how you living? All that good stuff. And he made that shit so awkward. Like immediately he was like, oh, hey, um, I, I was gonna come to you, but I had this and this and that, this and this and that. Keep in mind, last time I cut his hair might've been at least five months prior. I wasn't even thinking about him for real. But I had to be like, hey, slow down, bro. You good. It's not that deep. I understand that most people's relationship with their barbers are, is kind of similar to their relationship with their plug. Where of course, like the personal relationship matters a certain amount, but ultimately it's a service that people need. Generally, they're gonna go to whoever's, whoever they consider best or most convenient at the time, depending on circumstances. And over my career, I've cut thousands of people. Like it is impossible for me to exclusively be all those people's barbers. And then most of the people that I've cut, it was like a one-time thing. Like, I don't think running into my old clients is awkward because I just generally focus on building valuable relationships with people. So it's like, it's just like I made either a friend or an associate or some kind of connection and I just happened to cut their hair at one time. It's not a personal thing, but I guess I'm just kind of a dickhead because it's funny to like see somebody sweat, especially when I don't care about it. But number two awkward moment, when clients misinterpret our relationship. I think my work-life balance is the best it's ever been. I only spend time around people that I care to spend time around. Just people giving me good energy, good intentions, and stuff like that. I'm not buddy-buddy with everybody, but we have a positive relationship. We benefit each other positively. But a lot of times when you're cutting somebody's hair, you're learning a lot about them. There's y'all having vulnerable conversations, this and this and that. But all great barbers know the best way to build rapport is to let people talk about themselves and stuff that they like. Because, you know, the conversation does not slow down when people talk about stuff that they like. So over time, you start to learn a whole lot about the people that are sitting in your chair. But in my specific case, I do, I let my clients do a lot of talking and I steer a lot of conversation, but it's rare that I really share that many details about me. Because I mean, for the most part, I feel like it's not relevant most of the time, but because people are feeling vulnerable with you, a lot of times they might like exaggerate y'all relationship in their head. Like I had this one client who I was cutting for a while. He's good people. He's real good people. He came in the chair one day. He was just, we were just talking and he's like, bro, like you're one of my best friends. And I was like, oh, I appreciate that, my guy. To, to me, this was a dude that I just cut his hair every three weeks and we just have conversation. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like over the long time I was cutting his hair, I didn't share that much about me. So I didn't really feel like we were friends. It was just somebody I knew a lot about that I rocked with. But a number three, which is kind of extension of number two, when clients hit on you. All right, I'm not gonna sit here and act like this is all bad because a lot of times as a barber, you can use this to your benefit. Sometimes flirting is kind of harmless. It gives, it gives the conversation some flavor, but it gets awkward when we're not on the same page about it. In case y'all didn't know, I'm a heterosexual man. So of course I have a very specific demographic of people that I flirt with. And sometimes people outside of that specific demographic be trying to flirt with me. And it's like, mm, chill out with that shit. And a lot of times you can kind of just nip that in the bud, like just don't give that energy back and people get the message. But some people are hard headed. I remember there was this one client I was cutting for like maybe a few months or whatever. And you know, he's cool, like energy cool. We have a good conversation or whatever. But then he started like texting me outside of like getting a haircut. At first it was just like small conversation shit. And keep in mind, people generally know I'm not a big texter. Like if you text me, don't expect a timely reply. That's not the, an effective form of communication with me. For me. My phone is constantly blowing up all day. And most of the time, you're lucky if I respond in the first place. More than likely, it's about something important or something that I think is cool. And then he like texted me at like midnight talking about, I'm bored, with smiley face emoji. And I was like, all right, all right, hold up. All right now, as a business, my hours operation, stop at eight at the latest. And text after that, get into my own personal time and I saw, I remember looking at that text at midnight, like, 
I'll be fucked up like after 10, maybe 11. That's booty call hours. I guess I'm flattered, nigga, but I don't play that shit. And I waited like 14 hours to respond to this nigga like, hey, bro, I appreciate your business, but I don't play that shit. This is just a professional relationship. Don't misunderstand. But the thing is, as a barber, clients are going to have their own reasons for coming to you. A lot of times it's going to be related to your actual skill level, how you conduct your business. But most of the time, it's about who you are. Like if they if they like something about you, let's say your vibe, how you dress, or there's something about you that they that they relate to or they find attractive when they're weighing their options for a barber, you gon you gonna have more weight to you because they like things about you. But a lot of them come in trying to be on that fuck shit. I have a few female clients that be trying to be up to no good, and it's like I appreciate you for you know paying me money to do cut your hair, but that's that's all I'm cutting. All right, number four awkward moment. When clients are looking in the mirror too much, and of course, like the mirror is there for you to look at yourself, but not necessarily in the middle of the service every time I'm doing something. Sometimes I haven't even done nothing. I just brush it and they look in the mirror hard. Then I just cut it down a little bit, not even really starting in the cut. They look in the mirror and it's like, my nigga. But the moment I think is really awkward, not because it's not really because it's awkward for me, but I know they feel awkward. Let's say I'm like putting in a guideline or whatever. And then I turn around to my station and then like, I'm looking in the mirror and I see them looking in the mirror hard as shit and we make eye contact and then they just check themselves. <laughs> That's the funniest shit to me. You do understand I give you the mirror at the end so we can like correct anything you wanna correct. Like it's not, you don't need to see the whole process in real time. But number five, when clients are afraid to give criticism. As a barber, there's a good chance you'll know what's best for your client as far as what they want with their hair. My job as a barber is to understand, like, let's say what you have in mind as far as your haircut and then what I consider realistic or artistic and whatnot. And then we just try to find a happy medium, if not exactly what I want. I'm going to try to talk you into what I want, but ideally I'm trying to get it in the middle. But it's only awkward when it's like I hand a client the mirror and I can tell, like, they're looking at it, they're looking at it, and they're kind of just, like, focused in on something, but they don't want to ask or they don't want to say, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? So I'm sitting here like looking at them, looking awkward at the mirror for too long. Is there anything I can can change? Da, 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 da. And sometimes clients don't understand what necessarily needs to be changed. So it's hard to like eloquently explain that to barbers. Because especially because a lot of people don't know like actual haircut terminology and stuff. But sometimes clients might ask for like, oh, can you, can you blend this higher or do this and this and that? When really it's like they just want something a little bit lighter in a specific area and they don't want, they don't necessarily want it blended higher, but that all comes down to your consultation. You gotta get in your client's head and try to get on the same page. At the end of the day, while even though I'm doing the service, as a barber, all your work is commissioned work for real. Sure, most people might be fine with the, the fade that you slap on everybody, but people really want custom haircuts. Like the same fade copied and pasted on a bunch of people doesn't really fit everybody. I think the best approach to cutting hair is to giving all your clients tailored haircuts. Even if you do a high bald fades all day and the process is similar, the guidelines are gonna be slightly different depending on your client's head shape and a bunch of other factors. I'm really big on continuing the consultation throughout the haircut and then also after, just so you get a better idea of what your client wants going forward. Like I had a client who I consider my friend now because you know I've been cutting her hair so long. We got so much shit in common. We just, we vibe. But like the last few times I was cutting his hair, like this is one of my straight hair clients, but the way he wants his hair, it's like, you know, faded on the sides and then it just, you know, it's a little longer up top. But the way his hair grows, his hair kind of somewhat sticks out on the sides. He's more concerned about like how the sides go into the top than really the fade, you know what I'm saying? That's just what he cares about more in the haircut. But when I'm cutting his hair, I'm basically a fade specialist. I'm making sure that blend is nice as possible, da 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 But the last few times I was cutting his hair, he didn't really care for how it went into the top. And he was trying to communicate to me like, oh, you know, can you bring it in some? And I was doing that, but I was really hesitant about like really bringing it in that much. So I was, you know, bringing in a little bit, but it wasn't necessarily up to like how he was, how he was liking it a few times. So after a few times asked me to bring it in a little bit, like during the, like let's say the same haircut, he was just like, ah, it's all right. And I kind of took it like, oh, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, the way I was with the haircut, I was like, okay, the fade, I made sure the fade was nice. And I was like, all right, well, that's the most important part of the haircut. But you know, the aspect he was more concerned about was not the fade. So I'm not as experienced with straight hair as I am with like curly hair. So one day I was asking him like, hey bro, can I get you like an after hours appointment or whatever? I'm trying to really get better with my styling and just generally working with straight hair. 
And keep in mind, like, I consider us friends. Like, he been to my crib. Like, he's solid, cool people. Like, but, you know, even though I consider us friends, he still felt a little awkward about giving me criticism. He was like, hey, man, like, to be real, like, I ain't really, like, the last few times you were cutting my hair, I ain't really like how you were dealing with the top. Even though, like, the you know, face was real nice and da-da-da-da. It's just like, that's what I, what I cared about or whatever. And he's like, honestly, I'm kind of just trying to try somebody else to see if that, if that worked. Like, you know, they can handle that a little bit better. And most barbers would have took that personally, but... I don't take it personal because, I mean, I like him as a person. Like, we vibe. He's good people. And I also understand my own specific limitations. So I was like, man, I appreciate the honesty, da-da-da-da. And, like, every bit of criticism that I get, whether it's constructive or slightly on the negative, shadier side, which I don't deal with that much anymore, it all contributes to making me better and having a better understanding of my clients and what they want, which makes me a better barber. So, I mean, that situation was only awkward because, you know, he felt a little awkward about, you know, giving me criticism, but honestly, I really appreciated that shit. Because with most clients, if they if they have an experience with a barber where it like something was lackluster or they there was an aspect of the haircut that they valued that wasn't taken into consideration, they don't even tell anybody about it. They just go find another barber. But he gave me the opportunity to make myself better. And he's also my friend. It's all for my benefit as well as his because now he has a better idea of how to communicate whatever he wants to another barber. You know what I'm saying? So that's my list, but as far as awkward moments, I got an honorable mention. So when you lining up a client's like, let's say facial hair, right? And you say, oh, I'm about to line your mustache. And then they do this shit. Then they just like lick their lips. Why? It's also weird when like, they lick their lips and they kind of lick their mustache. It's funny to me, but it's like, what's your purpose? I'm not trying to cover nobody because I've done it too. I've done it too. I guess it's just a human nature thing. Maybe it's like you think about like, oh, my lips drop. Like, let me, let me wet them real quick. Like, it's, it's funny because like 90% of my clients do that shit. But that was my list of my top five awkward moments as a barber. I appreciate y'all watching. If y'all got, if y'all enjoyed the video, got any value, please go ahead and like, subscribe. If you got any comments, questions, concerns, go ahead and hit the comments for me. We'd really appreciate it. If you haven't already followed me on Instagram, go ahead and follow your boy at Cuss by Elvis. But till next time, craft of a clout, I'm out.